the defendant lawyers stated on media that your appearance might have political motivation, especially in the uh, election time. Uh, what uh, is your idea about it? Well, my election's coming up in 2018, so it's a ways off. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not working on that at this point. But, uh, uh, but that's not the reason why I made the appearance. The reason is, uh, is what I said that I, I wanted to, uh, uh, to let the court know um, a, as strongly as I can that we are serious that we want this bail to remain at a million dollars. One thing people have been talking about: what if the defendant lawyer proof? or trying to prove that the defendant has mental problem. Will he be released from prison to have treatment regarding his mental problem? Well, um, that's, that's, not, that's not so simple. So uh, there are really a couple of uh, areas uh, of, of concern there. So let's say, let's say that, the, um, uh, that the question is whether or not his, he's insane. And, uh, and so he's, he's, he has a defense of insanity and uh, that he doesn't he didn't know that his uh, what he was doing was wrong and didn't know the difference between right and wrong um, then at the end of a trial if if he's found not guilty by reason of insanity uh, he doesn't go free at that point he goes to a state hospital for the criminally insane where he would be treated until such time as he becomes sane so that's not a real that's not a likely defense I don't think um, if we're talking about just mental problems like he has he has certain uh, issues that are mental problems that that would tend to be more uh, the kind of thing where <clears throat> somebody would <clears throat> where he might uh, want to use that to reduce punishment like uh, um, <clears throat> try to work on maybe some kind of a uh, sympathy or something like that to to, um, to, tr to try to reduce the punishment a little bit that would be a like a plea to the judge after the judge decision yesterday uh, there will be mm -hmm. two days uh, coming up Yes. The, the day, um, the pre-trial on uh, May 13th and the uh, prelim on uh, June 10th. June 10th, right. What will be going on on mm -hmm. that two days? Okay, first of all, uh, keep in mind that, and I think I mentioned this before, uh, he had a right to have his preliminary hearing set within 10 days from yesterday because he's in, he's in custody, he has a right to a speedy trial, he has a right to have that preliminary hearing set at that time period. So the only reason the judge was able to set it at a longer time is because the defendant asked for a longer date. The defendant asked to, to set it on June 10th and, uh, and May 13th and agreed to waive his right to, a soon, to an earlier setting. Uh, so, uh, Which uh, means the defendant have total control of what date uh, to, to have uh, the day set for him. Well, we agreed, we agreed to those dates, but those are the dates he was asking for. So, um, uh, so he doesn't have, he doesn't necessarily have total control, but, um, but he does have total control of not waiving his right, right. to a to a earlier time. So, right. he has total control of that. And if he decided he didn't want to waive his right, he wanted an earlier date, he would have a preliminary hearing set within ten days of yesterday. That's the reason I was making that statement. But, okay. uh, um, so the question is, uh, what happens on those dates? Yes. Um, well, the uh, the preliminary hearing is is set uh, to uh, require the prosecutor to prove that he has enough evidence to hold the defendant for a jury trial, and so it's a protection uh, that uh, that uh, that a defendant has. Uh, so he can't he can't be held for a longer time waiting for a jury trial. There's a requirement that at a preliminary time. We have to show enough evidence that to convince a judge that uh, that there's a good reason to believe that he's guilty of, of the crime charge, and so the judge then says, "Yes, there's enough evidence for trial," so he holds him for trial. That's what we do at the preliminary hearing. We produce that evidence mm -hmm. at the uh, at the pretrial. Um, that's a uh, just a time to uh, to discuss the case to uh, uh, assure the uh, uh, the defense that they have. That they have the evidence that we're going to be producing, that mm -hmm. we've you know we've given that to them so they can see it. They have some time to work on it, um, and there could be some discussions about the case if uh, if the uh, if the defense, for example, wanted to uh, uh, work out some kind of a settlement. That could be possible to to work it out at that time. I'm not suggesting that that's that that's anything that is in the works, but 
that's a possibility could occur then. That is my observation yesterday. Um, when other cases come in to the uh, arrangement, they come in a group, like a lot of people in, mm -hmm. in the same uh, mm -hmm. place at the same time. But when Mr. Hong Wang Min coming out, he was the only one there. Was that set up agreed between you and the defendant lawyer or like the decision by the judge? And any reason for that? That's the, sh that's the decision of the sheriff. The sheriff has a duty to, to protect the safety of uh, everybody in, in the jail. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's in custody and uh, the sheriff has determined that uh, in order to protect his safety, that he be, that he be kept alone and away from those other people. Thank you very much for your information today. And it's my pleasure. Uh, I hope we will have more updates uh, with you, with your office, uh, on the day uh, to come when the uh, case uh, develop. Um, before uh, we end uh, the section today, mm -hmm. uh, can you uh, share some thought with our audience regarding uh, this case after the re uh, arrangement day? Can you have uh, some, mm -hmm. some thought? thoughts about the case? Yes, with, uh, with our audience, whatever you can uh, mm -hmm. share. Well, I think it's a shame that we had to, uh, that we had to arrest Mr. Uh, bail for this uh, molesting children. I mean, he's 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 here uh, uh, as an entertainer, and then uh, and then and then this happens, and this uh, uh, this complaint is brought to us. And I think that uh, you know we have a responsibility to to protect our children, to make sure that uh, that these kinds of things don't happen. That uh, um, uh, whether it's uh, somebody from uh, from here or from from elsewhere, if they're auditioning children for dancing. Uh, we expect that to be a legitimate audition, not a not a an opportunity to uh, to molest a child. So um, so we have we have to we have to bring him to justice. We have to we're going to uh, we're going to present the case um, to uh, to the court and to a jury uh, if it comes down to that, and see um, you know and, and and see what happens, and and let and let let the justice system uh, work in his case like it would for anyone else. Thank you very much again. Kính thưa quý vị khán thính giả của chương trình Phố Bô Sa TV, chúng ta vừa mới uh, có buổi nói chuyện với ông Tony Rukakis liên quan tới và phiên tòa liên quan tới vụ án của nghệ sĩ Minh Béo, tức Hồng Quang Minh. Uh, trong những ngày tới, Phố Bô Sa TV sẽ tiếp tục uh, có những cập nhật từ văn phòng của ông Chánh Biện Lý Quận Cam cũng như cập nhật từ phía luật sư của uh, nghệ sĩ Hải Minh Béo và những uh, góc độ khác nhìn về vụ án này. Xin kính chào quý vị khán thính giả của chương trình Phố Bô Sa TV.